from it, and blessed is the fruit of my womb, Jesus. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the Ember Friday of Pentecost week, with the commemoration of the patron saint of Germany, great Saint Boniface, who converted a great swath of the Germanic tribes from Holland all the way down through towards the Slavic areas, and um, thus spread the reign of the Sacred Heart during his day. Now, this Ember Friday is another joyful day of penance and of prayer. It should be especially sweet for us because it's the first Friday of the Sacred Heart's own month of June. We know that by our penance and prayer we can make up a little for all of our coldness and neglect, as our Lord has asked us to, and help, as St. Bonifat did in a marvelous way, to extend his reign, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of the Sacred Heart, over souls. In the old days, today was the um, day of thanksgiving for the first or the early harvest. There was a very early harvest of wheat because they would plant the wheat uh, in the very early spring or in the late winter, and then there would be a harvest. Today was the day of giving thanks to God for the um, food that came, the last one through the summer, and today we give thanks to God for his goodness for the spiritual harvest. A school year that's just about over now. We thank God for all of the graces, everything you children learn, all of the sacraments that have been given and received, especially the sacrament of confirmation, and looking forward to now the sacrament of First Holy Communion for the little children who will be receiving our Lord on Corpus Christi Sunday, the sacrament of Holy Orders for the deacon, who God willing will be ordained a priest on July 1st. These are all causes of joy and of gratitude. All of the baptisms and the marriages that have taken place in our church, the extreme unction, all of the confessions that have been heard and made so sincerely. For all of these, we thank the sanctifier, who is God, the Holy Ghost. In today's epistle from Joel the prophet, God the Holy Ghost tells us this. He says, O children of Zion, rejoice and be joyful in the Lord your God. Because he hath given you a teacher of justice, and he will make the early and the latter rain to come down to you as in the beginning. And the floors shall be filled with wheat, and the presses shall overflow with wine and oil. That refers, of course, especially to the sacraments we've been speaking about. And you shall eat in plenty and shall be filled. And you shall praise the name of the Lord your God, who hath done wonders with you. And my people shall not be confounded forever. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Those are really the words of the Sacred Heart, that our Lord is in our midst. He's with us all days, even unto the end of the, of the world and the coming of Christ in glory. God the Holy Ghost, you might say, children, gives us the Sacred Heart devotion all days, but especially on First Fridays, especially for the month of June. And what is the devotion to the Sacred Heart going to do? It's the way the Holy Ghost wants to build up in us a true trust or confidence, our love of God, our love for our Lord by means of his heart, so that none of us would ever give up on God as people are tempted to by the devil all the time. So the Holy Ghost uses the Sacred Heart devotion to increase confidence so people will come to him to visit him, come to him in confession, come to him in Holy Communion. And then for all the times that we've offended him and misused his gifts and been cold and forgetful, all of our sins, little and big, and everybody's sins, the Holy Ghost uses the Sacred Heart devotion to make reparation, penance, sorrow for sin, to repair some of God's glory that's damaged by our sins. And then we see finally in the life of today's saint, in the life of every saint every day, we see how the Holy Ghost uses the Sacred Heart devotion to propagate or to spread the faith in many ways. Many, many priests and nuns and brothers as missionaries have gone off in modern times bearing the name or the devotion of the Sacred Heart to encourage them. And we, when we use the Sacred Heart devotion, we can be missionaries ourselves. Saint Boniface, today's saint, 
should I always think we cheer, almost be honored with as big and as joyful a feast day, especially in Cincinnati, as St. Patrick is in March. Why is that? Because St. Boniface is really the patron saint of the Germanic or the German-speaking people. Back then there wasn't a Germany properly speaking, but he worked all through what would become Germany and Belgium and Holland. There were two divisions where St. Boniface worked, this monk missionary. There was what's called the old uh, Germany, the old Roman Empire, the remnants of it, where the church had been planted already, but where there was a lot of corruption and ignorance, and sometimes priests and bishops and the people were not leading a very good life at all. And St. Boniface came from England to reform them and bring them back to a real devout, good Catholic life. And then there was the New Germany, the tribes that were still pagan. And some of these pagans were relatives of the Catholics now living in England. And that's especially what motivated St. Boniface. Here he was, he was a monk and he was a teacher. This is in the 8th century, the 700s. And um, he was very happy in his life, but the Holy Ghost wanted him to do something else. By that age, he was already, I mean, in that time, his age was already pretty old. He was about 40, 45, and the Holy Ghost knocked on the door of his heart and said, what about your relatives who are in Europe? What about those same tribes? They've never been converted. So he made a first trip to what is today Holland, a part of Holland called Frisia, or Friesland, where they speak still today um, a language that's very similar, one of the closest to the English language. When you hear people speaking it, you think they're speaking English. That's how close the, the, two, the two countries were connected at one time. Well, he went there, and because of political situations and other things, he was not successful. So he went back home again to his monastery in England. Then the next time he determined to do things right. So before he did anything else, he went to see the Pope, Gregory II. He asked for his blessing. He asked for the grace to speak in the Pope's name. The Pope gave him a new name as someone who does good. Boniface, he changed his name because his, his uh, original name was Winfred. And then, armed with the Pope's permission and blessing and the graces of being a bishop, he went back a second time to Friesland. He was there for a while. Then he went to old Germany, and then he went to new Germany, and he tried, the Holy Ghost inspired him, he tried every possible means, whatever it would take in a given situation, to make converts. Uh, Saint Boniface by himself was a kind of a meek monk. He was humble and timid, really. But if he needed to, he could take an axe in his hand and chop down an oak tree that was being worshipped by the pagan Germans. And everyone was amazed at his bravery. He didn't care because he knew he was doing the right thing. And, of course, something happened to him. And those people then came to the Catholic faith and received holy baptism. But at the same time, he never believed in doing any violence to anybody. Later on, Charlemagne, by means of the force of, of soldiers and invasions and wars, would force the pagans, who had not been converted yet, to adopt Christianity. But St. Boniface himself was never a believer in that. And he, by his meekness, was able to seal with a martyr's blood, going back at the end of his life to where he had first started as a missionary, back to Holland, and there he and his companions died as martyrs, which is why we venerate him not only as a great missionary, but also as a martyr. He was able, St. Boniface was, to inspire others to become missionaries after him. And he did this by means of what we call a round-robin letter. That is to say, remember we talked yesterday about how the mail, the mailman, that had a big thing to do with the, with the life's work of yesterday's thing, Friends, uh, Saint Francis Caracciolo? Well, it was the same thing with uh, St. Boniface. He would write letters, very interesting letters, describing his missionary work, who he met, what happened, what the possibilities were. And he would send them to his sister, first of all, who was a nun in England. Later on, she joined him in, in Germany and founded a convent of nuns. And after she read the letter, she would send it to another convent or to another monastery. It would make the rounds throughout all of England. And that's how people supported him. 
sent him help that he needed, and especially, that is how he got many vocations as young missionaries to assist him in his work. All of the things that he did, children, were a little bit like the friends of the paralyzed man in today's gospel. Today we have that interesting gospel of the man who's paralyzed. He can't get into Jesus for healing because he can't walk, and his friends can't get him in the door. Our Lord is teaching in a very small house that's packed full of people. Everybody wants to hear our Lord. Nobody will give up his place to someone else. He doesn't want to miss out on what's happening. So his friends use some original thinking. The Holy Ghost inspired it in them. They climb up to the roof. It was a very low house. And with ropes, they haul up the paralyzed man on his stretcher to the roof. And then since the house was a very flimsy construction at that time in Palestine in the Middle East, it was very easy to remove the tiles or the covering of the roof and to make a nice opening. And then, in the, using the opening, they let the paralyzed man down right into the midst of the house, and our Lord looks up, and here he is, someone who needs a heal, healing from our Lord. And our Lord's very pleased that they used their imagination and that the Holy Ghost had inspired them to try this different new way to get somebody to our Lord. You see, that's what St. Boniface did. That's what you have to do. That's what we priests have to do. We can never be just content just to follow, oh, well, we've just always done it this way. No, no. The main thing is, how can we get souls to Jesus? Now, it's interesting in the Gospel, too. Our Lord didn't, first of all, make the man walk. First of all, he forgave him his sins, because it's sins that are the real problem in life, and he was able to get rid of the sins because he's God. And after that, almost as an afterthought, he gave him his health back and told him that he could walk. Let us go to our Lord, the Sacred Heart, inspired by God the Holy Ghost, let us go to him with gratitude. Let us go to him with confidence today. Let us go to him with some sacrifices and some penance for First Friday. And let us go to him most of all with a little originality. Whatever our Lord wants of us, let's find a way to make it work, to make it happen. And especially when it comes to leading others to our Lord, I know the Holy Ghost will inspire us properly. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.